Hail and Merchants. Welcome to the world of Baldur's Gate 3. It's me, the Spot King. And in today's video, I will show you super cool build for Gale. Wizard got tools for every situation. He knows most spells in this game, and he can learn any other spell. But most of the time, wizards are really squishy, but not this build. Another problem for wizards is hard to keep your concentration, especially in honor mode. And if you will follow this build, you will get rid of all of these problems. First of all, let's talk about leveling. I will demonstrate levels on Hirelink. And to make a really powerful wizard, instead of creating wizard, you want to create first level fighter. In the actual game, you can go to wizard level 5. Until level 5, it doesn't matter what levels you will pick. But at level 6, respect your gale and get first level in fighter. Fighting style will be defense, of course, just to increase our armor class. And ability distribution. Main spellcasting attribute for wizards is intelligence. That's why we're maxing out intelligence. Second important attribute is constitution, to have more HP and be more tanky. Other attributes is not so important. Wisdom is most common saving throw, so you can have something like 12 in wisdom, or even 14, 10 in charisma, 10 dexterity, and this will make a really balanced and nice wizard. Level 2 instantly we're switching back to wizard. For starting kinships I recommend going with firebolt, shocking grasp and minor illusion. If you're not planning to use minor illusion a lot then pick light or bone chill. But it doesn't matter too much, all the spells is really reliable. Then spells. We get large variety of spells from level 1. You can learn all of them, but I will tell you what to pick so you will be really powerful. A lot of players actually like shield. I didn't like to use my spell slots to gain protection from few hits, uh, so I'm always picking magic missile instead. It's far more reliable way to finish down targets that is low on health and not waste your actions, especially in early game. Then I always like to pick Enhanced Leap, Long Strider and Feather Fall. Very cool exploration stuff. If you need to jump somewhere or jump from somewhere, you can use all these spells without using spell slots at all and travel through maps. And last two spells from first level will be Burning Hands, it has our melee spell, and Tasha's Hydos Lofter. As for prepared spells on first level, so just ignore Enhanced Sleep and Feather Fall and pick them only later if you need. You can adjust them when you explore a map. You don't need them in a fight. And in a fight you will have Tasha's Hydus Laughter, Burning Hands, Magic Missile. So level 2, that's where we're picking our wizard subclass. There's 8 subclasses total. And most reliable, most stable, that you can trust, is Evocation Wizard. Having wizard that you can trust on Honor Mode is really important. Why Evocation? Because uh, you're getting these Sculpt spells. Your Evocation spells won't inflict damage to your allies. That's big because a lot of AoE spells is actually evocation spells. Like Chromatic Orb and other stuff can inflict large amount of damage to your allies. So another good spells for like first levels of the game will be Thunder Wave to push enemies away or maybe even Sleep to put enemies to sleep when they get low hit points because uh, you can put enemies only up to 24 hit points to sleep. So level 4 Wizard. Important spells from level 2. Scorching Ray, Evocation Fire Spell, we're not targeting our allies with it, but we will focus on fire spells with this build. And Misty Step, to being able to reposition yourself with bonus action in case you're in danger. Keeping best position as a wizard is really nice. And by keeping good position, you won't ever need a shield spell. So, next good spells on level 5 to pick from level 2. It will be Hold Person and knock. Basically we don't need any other damaging spells, so having some utility to being able to open doors, chests, so when you don't have a rogue in a party, maybe you don't have lockpicks, maybe you failed to lockpicking or something happened, so you can open basically anything with the spell. Again, nice exploration stuff and hold person very nice disabled spell. As for additional cantrips, I suggest picking bone chill at level 5, because you will have a lot of use of this spell because it's very nice against undead and you will face a lot of undeads at level 5, level 6. Right now we can pick our feet. 
and we're picking Elemental Adept Fire. We will do more damage with fire spells, and we ignore resistance to fire damage. Just in case our enemies get resistance to fire, you will always ignore this and do more damage. Then at level 6 you will unlock spells of level 3. So, our most favorite and the best spell is Fireball. Another good spells from this level will be a remove curse in case you don't have cleric to remove curses. Slow can be useful, but I don't like it too much. And of course, try to pick counter spell. That's a very nice spell to block enemy spells, and this will save you a lot of time. When enemy trying to launch fireball at you, you will see exactly on which target he's hitting on, and you will decide do you want to use spell slots to block the spell or not. As for prepared spells for this level, again, you want to have all fire spells, so it will be Burning Hands, Scorching Ray, Fireball from level 1, 2 and 3, and then you disable spell Hold Person, and of course Misty Step. Do you need Tasha's Hydra's Laughter? It's up to you. Maybe you even can forget about this spell right now and pick a counter spell instead. Basically we'll play like this for next few levels, so level 7. Pick any spell you like that I mentioned, or maybe you just need another spell. Again, you play in Wizard, you can learn any spell that you will find spell scroll for, and you can find all spell scrolls, so it doesn't matter. And level 8, that's where we're getting access to level 4 spells. And there's few honorable mentions that we will instantly pick. So, Wall of Fire, our fire spell that requires concentration, and another spell that requires concentration is Greater Invisibility. That's a nice spell if you got cool rogue in a party, or gloom stalker, or someone with high stealth ability. If you're not planning to like cast this on your rogue, then ignore the spell and pick any other you like. You can have summons like conjure minor elemental. You can have fire shield in case you want some retaliation of melee attacks. But mostly we don't care about spells from level four, so we're going to level nine. On level 9 we get an additional feat, it will be ability improvement and plus 2 into intelligence. It will increase our hit chance with our spells. What else do we need? Level 10, that's where you get access to level 5 spells. And on level 5 I like these 3 spells. So it will be Cloud Kill, in case you need some poison damage with a really large AoE radius. Hold Monster, in case you're fighting monsters and you need to hold them. And Telekinesis, very nice concentration spell to have fun and throw enemies, inflict nice damage. So look at these spells, pick uh, some at level 10, then go to level 11, you get an additional cantrip, it doesn't matter what you pick. And on last level just pick whatever is left, Telekinesis, you can pick any other spell again that you like or you forgot to pick. And we're finishing at level 12, this will unlock us level 6 spells, so for Honor mod. I would say you need only two spells. One of them Globe of Invulnerability. And second is Chain Lightning. So in case you need a really large amount of damage in a fight and enemies is not protected from lightning, you can use this. But most of the time you will save this level 6 spell slot for Globe of Protection from every damage type, from basically all damage. You will face a lot of hard bosses and this will save you a lot of time. It requires concentration, but as long as you stay inside of this globe, you can't lose this concentration anyway because you're not taking any damage. So make sure to pick this awesome spell for Honor Mod or maybe you will lose your run someday. Chain Lightning doing large amount of damage to a lot of targets, but if you want uh, some nice single target damage spell, then get Disintegrate. It's doing 10 to 6 plus 40 flat damage or force damage. So it's far more reliable if you need large amount of damage to a single target. And Cool Destruction Disable spell from level 6 is Auto Irresistible Dance. Coolest part is that you will always disable enemy at least for one turn with this spell, so that's a really nice spell. And basically what we will have at our panel in the late game. So this is everything you need to have really reliable wizard in the late game. And mostly like throughout the game, so throughout the game you will just need some magic missile, just in case. But later in the game, when you level up and increase your hit chance with your spells, just focus on your fire spells. Firebolt, our kinship will do 3 to 10 damage, so already really impressive. So it's already doing more damage than burning hands to a single target, but you can upcast your spells. 
Upcasting burning hands is not a great idea, so use it only if you need to inflict some fire damage in a cone, maybe upcast it to level 2 for maximum of 24 damage to multiple targets, but Scorching Ray will be one of your favorite spells, but it requires attack roll, so before casting, make sure to check out enemy defense. If you got something like 80% hit chance, 70% hit chance, you can definitely go for it. But 50, 60, maybe just not launch the scorching rays at your target, because half of the rays will miss. At level 2, it fires 3 rays. You can do it on one target, you can do it on multiple targets. And each upcasted spell will do one more additional ray. So upcasting Scorching Ray to level 5 can inflict 72 damage, 12 d6, because each ray doing 2 d6 damage. So that's insane. And you will probably just destroy your targets with basic Scorching Ray. Yeah, definitely. So if your targets get really high armor, then go for Fireball instead. And don't forget, Fireball won't inflict damage to your teammates. So. Right now, Mintara and Raging Jumper in my party, but this boy and crab is not, so we're doing this fireball. And as you can see, my party not taking any damage. That's why we begin Evocation Wizard. Before fight starts, I recommend going with Wall of Fire, just uh, change how battlefield to looks and inflict some damage to enemies. And now your teammates can fight alongside this wall. You can push them here, they can push them here. But in case uh, you don't want this Firewall, you can cast Cloud Kill, but uh, be aware, Cloud Kill is Conjuration spell, so it will damage your allies. Coolest part about Cloud Kill, you need to cast it once and you can reposition this. So when you cast in Wall of Fire, it will damage enemies, but they can walk away. If enemies walking away from Cloud Kill, you get this Cloud Kill recast. You can do it every turn, it will use action, but no spell slots, so you can do it every turn, change location of Cloud Kill and do more damage each turn to targets. Then we have our disabling spells, so Otto's Irresistible Dance, 100% chance to hit, you just cast it and target will become denser and will dance, will try to succeed on saving throws each turn, but at least you will disable any target for one turn. And Hold Person, Bread and Butter, if you're fighting against humanoids, you can upcast it to target multiple targets at one time, so at level 4 you can cast it on 3 targets in one turn. Our start of the day spells, Long Strider, just uh, cast it instantly as a level 6 spell. You can upcast 3 trials, they won't cost you any spell slots. Cast it on yourself, on your teammates, on your summons, and everyone will have more move speed in a battle. And I also have some secret spells like The Throne, Necrotic Damage, really high damage, and Artistry of War. It's basically magic missile, but with a lot higher damage. As wizard you can learn the spells and cast them once per short rest and once per long rest. So as you can see nothing hard here, just simple yet very effective build for Gale. But what items do you need to choose to make this wizard work? Yeah, by the way, if you're interested to where to get Death Throne and Artistry of War spells, you need to go to Act 3 and in this location, Sorcerer's Sundries, you need to explore it and you will find the spells in Secret Vault. I won't spoil a lot of stuff here, how to get this. I guess you can Google it if you don't know. And now let's talk about gear. So, early game. Spell Sparkler. Just get it. You can get it instantly when you get in to the Act 1. You don't need even to fight to get the Spell Sparkler stuff. And you will gain lightning charges every time you're doing spell damage. And that's basically how this wizard works in the game. You just need Spell Sparkler and cast Magic Missile. Every missile will be counted as damage spell, you will gain lightning charges, and every Magic Missile will do more damage than it should do normally. That's why Magic Missile is so cool, very nice and powerful spell, and this uh, stuff will basically carry you to the late game. What about gear? So, as this type of wizard, we're not squishy guy, we're using heavy armor. Pick any heavy armor you will find that is best for you. It doesn't matter too much, just best heavy armor you can get, get it. In the late game, best one you can get for this type of wizard will be Armor of Persistence. Incoming damage reduced by 2, you gain resistance and blade ward, so it's almost impossible to inflict any damage to you, and this means you will keep your concentration almost forever. 
ring slots is not too important too, so just pick whatever you like, whatever your party don't need. About uh, amulets slot, I would pick uh, magic missile amulet from Underdark, you can find it, you can buy it. And then I will switch to necklace of elemental augmentation when I'm going to the late game, because when one of our kinship deals any damage type, we add in spellcaster modifier to damage dealt. Just by keeping this amulet, we're already doing additional for damage with firebolt or Shocking Grasp, or Rare Frost, or any other cantrip, so that's very nice. Boot slot is doesn't matter too much, so disintegrating Nightwalkers will give you additional Misty Step, and you can cast it once per short rest without using any spell slot, so it's nice to save some spell slots. Our headgear will be Hood of the Weave, we get in plus 2 bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls, and that's main attribute we want to see on Gale, basically. Improved spell save DC and spell attack rolls. Basically giving you more chance to hit with something like Scorching Ray. So Scorching Ray 60% chance to hit and our target got 17 armor class right now. But just by keeping Hood of Weave, we're already on 70% chance to hit. So same idea for our Cloak, Cloak of the Weave plus one bonus to same stats. Heteric Shield will give you armor class and plus one to these stats. And our stuff will be best late game stuff for wizards, any other like spellcasting uh, guys. Marka Heshkir is the best pick. You gain an again plus one to spell save DC and spell attack rolls, but also you gain an arcane battery, which will give you ability to cast next spell without using a spell slot. So very useful when you cast in high level spells. And also Kereshka Favor. So Kereshka Favor, we will always use this stuff at the start of the day. So it's always Long Strider and then Kereshka Favor from our stuff and most of the time we will use Bolts of Doom. Basically we'll gain access to different spells, mostly high level spells, but most importantly you gain in additional abilities. So when you're doing spell damage, you gain in lightning charges, same as your spell sparkler stuff. So when we're switching to Marker Hishkir, we're keeping these lightning charges in case you still like using magic missile. But also we get in the chained lightning spell, so it's nice to use it, especially if you not learned it or you want to use disintegrate sometime. So our glove uh, slot can be a lot of gloves actually, but I like keeping spell might gloves. When you cast in spells that requires attack roll, you can take penalty and deal additional 1d8 damage. There's a lot of uh, more better gloves, but still it's nice addition to your damage, but don't forget you need to turn it off or on and as you can see it's working on our cantrips too so if you want to keep your spell slots alive then probably you will use more cantrips and with this build you will add 1d8 to your cantrip damage plus 4 from your amulet plus 4 because you wizard so again mostly my favorite part about this wizard it requires no positional awareness at all so Enemies standing nearby of your allies, just throw fireball at them, you won't inflict damage to your allies. And yeah, you can use arcane battery in the late game, upcast this fireball, and level 6 fireball can do 66 damage, and you won't require any spell slot for this. But be careful with wall of fire, it will still inflict damage to your allies. So my favorite, of course, Scorching Ray, turn on spell might if you got high chance to hit, for example this enemy got Really high armor class, but even with spell might Todd on, we got 85% chance to hit him. With Arcane Battery, we're upcasting the spell up to level 6 to throw 7 rays, and let's see. By the way, the Steel Watcher got resistance to fire damage, and as you can see, there's tons of damage inflicted. So, look, fire resistance, we should do half of the damage, and additionally, you add in this spell might modifier to each array. That's why I like these gloves when using this build. So basically it 2 to 6 plus 4 intelligence plus 1 to 8 for each ray. And few of the rays doing additional lightning damage as you can see. Because we got Kereshka favor and we inflict lightning damage. When we inflicted damage just go into safety, use misty step and run away from the fight a little bit. And on the next turn get back to business. That's actually my favorite wizard build and it's doing nice demolition to a lot of targets while keeping your teammates safe and you will be safe too. So it's hard to hit you, 
and if enemy hits they doing really low damage but my favorite combination is actually hold person and when the enemies hold it then you're doing your attack roll spells and scorching ray again it's attack roll spell don't forget it each ray against these persons will be critical hit so i guess three rays is more than enough and look at this beauty oh my goodness oh zero damage zero damage again that's crazy and again one of my favorite strategies with this is to use cloud kill I will reposition myself and try to use Cloud Kill on all of the enemies over here. So now they took really nice amount of damage. What we need to do? Basically nothing. The enemies will start their turn in Cloud Kill, take damage from it. So they already took like two instances of damage, but we casted it only once. As you can see, damage is really insane. This guy already took 50 damage just from one instance of Cloud Kill. And now everyone run away from Cloud Kill. But still, again, without any spell slot, we can use this spell one more time and still continue damaging these guys over here. I would say main problem for a lot of people who say that Cloud Kill is a bad spell because it's doing low amount of damage, so 40 maximum damage as level 5 spell, level 3 Fireball doing more damage, but don't forget, level 3 Fireball eats spell slots, but Cloud Kill eats only one spell slot with this build. It's almost impossible to break your concentration. You can recast it every turn and you can basically double this damage. It's not 40, it's 80 damage. And 80 damage, guys, it's level 6 spell. So, Cloud Kill, everyone damage. We just ended our turn, we don't care. This guy taking damage, trying to run away from Cloud Kill. Now it's your turn. Oh no, it's being a bad guy. But he can't hit us because we got a large armor class. Oh no, one more arrow. Missed. Oh, two damage. How could I keep my concentration and destroy everyone with this cloud kill? As you can see, concentration saving throws is just insanely successful. That's because concentration scales with the damage you take and you take in low amount of damage. And by picking fighter, we will add our constitution modifier plus proficiency, plus resistance, so guys, it's almost impossible to break our concentration with this build, no matter what you are concentrating on. You can even run away, provoke opportunity attacks, it's almost impossible to hit your enemy, <laughs> they again hitting for 2 damage. Oh, big guy again missing. If you wonder what is calculation for 2 damage, basically he's hitting us for 1d10, that's big damage, plus 5 strength, that's super big damage. And he got 8 damage total, but we have in it with resistance, so it's only 4. And minus 2 from our armor, so it's only 2 at the end. Then basically you're casting Cloud Kill again, and that's how you play this wizard. Or oh, just in case you need some fireballs, of course. Another problem with Cloud Kill, a lot of enemies in the later acts will have poison immunity. So you won't be able to do any damage with it. Again, most of the time it will be single target enemies like big bosses or these still watchers so just throw scorching ray fireballs burning cans wall of fire at them or chain lightning for your kereshka favor they are vulnerable to lightning damage so it's easy to actually very strong and reliable build i hope you enjoyed it see you in the next videos guys